Hi, do you know how to deal with a person suffering from a mental illness? Well, to start with, one has to evaluate the condition of the person. And we have an expert who is going to tell us how to go about it through this film. So, over to the expert. Greetings. Evaluating a person with a mental illness may be different from other physical illness examinations, but it is not difficult. To understand the patient's illness, it must be understood in the context of his or her social, cultural and economic environment to understand the pathology. To begin with, we must observe the patient as he or she enters the room. This can help us plan our approach. For example, if the patient looks severely disturbed, then we can opt to take the history from the family or the attendants rather than talking to the patient first. It is important to be calm and patient while the patient or the caretaker narrates the problem. After they have finished, we can ask open-ended questions to explore the illness further. For example, instead of asking, do you cry when you are upset, ask, when you are upset, what do you do? Explore the onset, nature and course of the symptoms and find out about situations in which the patient develops the symptoms. For example, ask, can you recall and tell me when, where and how do you get the headaches? Inquire about the severity of the symptoms and their impact on the patient's life, sleep, appetite, bowel and bladder functions. Explore possible areas of stress. Hey, before we go any further, let's watch an example of how to explore stress areas. Doctor, I, I break out into a cold sweat and palpitations when I am alone. Oh, and why does that happen? I mean, do you feel lonely or do you feel scared or uh, something else? No. Um, doctor, uh, actually, I, I, I think people may harm me. Yeah? Why or who, who are these people who you think would harm you? Um, well, doctor, my, 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 my brothers were always against me, and and and, and now, now 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 my parents are with them, and and, and the neighbors, and and the others. Now let's see what the expert has to say about it. Thanks for showing that. This person could have easily been misdiagnosed as suffering from an anxiety disorder. But the doctor's open-ended questions allowed the patient to explain himself. And now we know that the patient was suffering from persecutory thoughts which may be associated with a psychotic illness. Next, we go on to personal history. This gives us a reference point to understand the patient's present state. Look for the kind of person patient was before the onset of illness, interpersonal problems, any significant events at birth during childhood, schooling, marriage or workplace, any physical or mental illness in the past. Family history of mental illness can also help us move towards a diagnosis. That covers the history taking part, but do remember that the patient's privacy and confidentiality must be maintained. Personal matters like sexuality should be explored sensitively. History obtained from family or attendance should be corroborated. Though rare, it may sometimes be manipulated for various reasons. Having done all that, we come to the mental state examination to clinch the diagnosis. The first thing that strikes us in any meeting is the appearance and behavior of a person. If the patient has poor self-care and is withdrawn, we are most likely dealing with a psychotic disorder. A depressed and morose person is likely to be suffering from depression. An excited, overactive patient may be having bipolar disorder. An anxious and fidgety patient may be suffering from anxiety or agitated depression. Then we observe the patient's speech and thought process. An irrelevant, non-understandable, non-repressive or mute patient may be having a psychotic disorder. Pessimistic thoughts or a low amount of speech may point towards depression. 
while rapid and productive speech with big ideas suggest a bipolar disorder. And talking about worries, tensions and stresses are signs of a patient suffering from anxiety disorder. Next comes the patient's mood. It is judged on the basis of our objective assessment versus the patient's own description. If the patient is apathetic, communicates no emotion or suggests inappropriateness to the situation or the question asked, then it points towards a psychotic disorder. So how do you feel these days? I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm fine. If the patient looks sad, says so, and even breaks down into crying, then it may be depression. How do you feel these days? I feel very sad. I feel like crying. And the opposite of that, that is elation, suggests bipolar disorder. Fine. Perfectly fine. And how are you, doctor? I am fine, thank you. If the patient is anxious, then of course it is an anxiety disorder. Doctor, I am feeling tensed and bit worried nowadays. To further dig into the illness, we need to know if the patient has any perception-related symptoms. The most important ones are hallucinations, which are perceptions for which there is no stimuli. The commonest ones are auditory, though visual hallucinations are also often found. So, uh, tell me, do you experience something strange these, these days? I mean, like maybe hearing some voices or, or seeing things that others may not be able to see or... Okay. Well, it, it, it may sound a little strange, but um, some, some, sometimes I do hear voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. But what kind of voices? What do you mean? And do you see the people also? No, no they're, 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 just, they're just voices. Okay. But where do they come from? They come, they come from the, from the wall, they, they, they come from, sometimes they come from um, below and uh, sometimes they come, sometimes they come from uh, behind me. This is a typical example of auditory hallucinations. The persecutory nature usually points out towards a psychotic disorder. If the content suggests grandiosity, then it is most likely to be a bipolar disorder, manic phase. Before finalizing a diagnosis, we must assess higher mental functions like altered sensorium, orientation to time, place and person, memory, especially recent memory. This is elicited by asking the patient to recall personal and current events in the last two days. This helps us rule out possible organic causes. And finally, we must assess contact with reality, a lack of which is diagnostic of a psychotic disorder, which is established by the presence of hallucinations, delusions, which are firm and unshakable beliefs in spite of evidence to the contrary and are not in keeping with the patient's social and educational background and disorganized behavior. Now you can try it out on your patients. It is not difficult. Hope you will find it useful. Goodbye. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this film. But if you find yourself stuck at some point, please feel free to watch it again. That's all there is to this one for the moment. But do not forget to check out our other films in the series. I promise you'll find something worth your interest. So see you around. Bye-bye.